Here we are looking at the standard Hamilton 212 jet pump and recall from the previous video that I'm dissecting this thing and trying to figure out exactly why it's difficult to shift from forward to reverse and from reverse to forward. Recall also that I removed the brake box and now it uh, looks like this. It just has this bearing thing on the end of the uh, cable and then I modified this clamp thingy a little bit uh, to better align it so there's not quite as sharp a bend in the cable right here. And my opinion was that this made things a lot, lot better. Uh, so it's a lot easier with this than with the brake box on. Uh, so, then, uh, well, what does that mean? What, what, do I re what do I really mean when I'm saying it's easier? So I decided to quantify this. And uh, so now we'll go look at what I've got on the helm. So here's the helm set up and you can see I've got this rope tied to the top of the handle here. Then it runs out through this pulley and then down to these weights. And uh, the pulley is attached over there and up there so it's uh, pretty much locked in place. Um, and right now I've got 20 pounds on there and it is not moving. So if everybody's saying, oh god, you know, jet boaters are all a bunch of weaklings, they just can't move this thing. well. This is actually a lot better than it was, and it's 20 pounds and it's not going anywhere. So here, let me add another 5 pounds and a little clamp and see if it moves. Oh, there it goes. It just, it's sort of, it's, it's going just a little bit. Okay. So we'll call that 20, we'll call that 25 pounds. Uh, and say, well, you know, the clamp weighs a little bit, so, you know, maybe it's a pound. But we'll just call that 25 pounds to move the thing. And recall that this is a lot easier than it used to be. Yeah, I wasn't being 100% clear there. Uh, what I should have said was it's a lot easier than it was before I removed the brake box. So removing the brake box probably cut the force in half that was needed to move this. Now you can see I've added a little bit of weight to the bucket. So that's a two and a half pound weight. And there's the clamp, it weighs something, so let's just say that it weighs a pound and a half, so we'll say that all together I added four pounds of weight to the bucket. And uh, now we want to see, well, how much weight do we have to add to the helm to get this thing to move. Okay, so here we are with the uh, four pounds or so hanging off the bucket. And here's the cable again. And now I'm at 40 pounds of weight total, and it's not moving. So that means I've increased the weight by 15 pounds when I added four on the bucket. And I'm going to add, add five more. Oh, and then it goes. Okay, so five more got it to go. So that uh, four pounds on the bucket means I had to add 20 pounds here, which means there's a factor of five multiplier, which is a lot. So. With the, brake, with the brake box present, if that was amplifying things by, say, a factor of 2 also, then you take 2 times 5 and, and you've amplified the force on the bucket by a factor of 10 at the helm, which is a lot. So when people are saying, oh god, this, this helm is impossible to move, oh, it's because of the insane force from the, all the hydraulic stuff acting on the bucket, that may not be true. The, uh, the bucket force may only be 10 pounds or so, and then it's just amplified by a factor of 10 through this, this system, the cable and whatnot, and it makes it impossible to move. So now we've got to diagnose and figure out exactly where this factor of 5 is coming from. We already got about a factor of 2 out of the brake box, but there's 5 more to go. So in the interest of completeness, to see whether this is some sort of exponential function or if it's a linear function, I decided to add two and a half more pounds of weight on the bucket and then uh, see what happens at the helm. And here we have 12 and a half pounds more than we did the last time dangling from this, so I added about five times the weight that I added to the bucket. So there's that five times multiplier, but the handle isn't moving. So I'll just reach out here and dangle some more on here if I can... I can make it stay. Okay, and I just added some more, you know, so we're up to uh, uh, six plus times what I added on the bucket. You know, so let's, let's see if it's easier to make it go. 
And if I add just a little bit more, okay, there it goes. So we'll just say it was six on this one and, and five on the last one. So that's pretty close, you know. So we can say it's kind of a linear multiplier of five to six. And recall that a really high quality cable will have some, somewhere in the neighborhood of a 0.4 multiplier or 1.4 times the input to move it. If it's a really high quality cable and there's 360 degrees of bend in the cable. So somehow we're getting a whole lot more resistance in this system than we ought to. So now I'm down in the engine compartment and I want to find out if all that resistance is coming from the bucket linkage. You know, somewhere between this lever and the, and the bucket itself or if it's coming from somewhere else. So if I can move this easily, that'll tell me something. You know, going into reverse, it's really easy. I just have to barely move it. And going into forward, yeah, I've got a push on it. But, you know, my, it's nowhere near 60 pounds. It might be 20 pounds. And then my leverage position here is, is really poor compared to at the helm. So, now I can't say that it's the, the bucket, you know. Some of it may be. And then you know, I've also got the cable that I'm, I'm pushing and pulling on too. So, it may be part of the part of the resistance problem also. So, you know, my conclusion is, you know, maybe the, uh, the linkage is creating some of the resistance, but not, not, not all of it, that's for sure. Um, so, we're going to take this apart and um, take this apart here so we can separate the two halves of the system and see where the problem is. Okay, now I've got these, uh, the two halves disconnected and the uh, lever now moves a lot easier. The only thing keeping it in place before keeping it from falling in, the bucket from falling into uh, reverse was uh, resistance in the cable. Now I can move it back and forth, you know, fairly easily. Now it's not super easy, but um, it's certainly not 60 pounds. And this thing is, I can, I can just barely move it. And pulling it back out is pretty hard to do, so that's kind of in the middle of the throw, so looks like there's a lot of resistance in the, in the cable. So I started pulling up the floor to get ready to re remove the cable. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, maybe the problem isn't actually the cable. Maybe the problem is actually in this uh, single lever helm thing. It's got all these uh, little uh, moving parts in here. And maybe those are grinding and somehow binding everything up and making it impossible. So, before removing the cable, I thought, well, I would test to see if there's a problem in the helm. And so here I have 15 pounds of weight going up to here, and it attaches there where the cable attaches. And here's the, uh, the handle thing. And so now I'm in, I would be in full forward because it's all, all the way down forward. And now we'll see what happens. You know, if, if it's really, really hard here, then I'll know that, oh, God, it's, it's in the helm and it's not in the cable. So, here I'll pull, I'll, I'll pull on this. Oh, wait a minute, that, that's really, really easy. Imagine that. Oh, look, can, can Pinky do it? I'm pretty sure Pinky can do it. Oh, look, Pinky can do it. Pinky can do it all by itself. So, Pinky can lift those 15 pounds. So, it does have a little bit of mechanical advantage here because these weights are only rising four inches total, and you can see the throw on this, on this uh, handle is a lot more than four inches. Let's try Pinky again. Okay, Pinky will curl around just a little bit this time. Okay, there we go. Pinky did it again. Pinky could do this all day. It's not hard at all. Oh, and if I, if I just let go of it, oh look, it just falls into forward like that. So no, there isn't a whole lot of uh, resistance in the helm. So the more I look at this uh, single lever helm thing, the more, uh, more impressed I am with the overall design. It is, it is very clever actually. So I bought a new cable craft cable. It's this green one over here, and here's the old one. It's this black thing. And the cable craft was shipped in a box about that big. And if I pull on the ends of it, it moves really easily. When I curl the uh, old cable up about the same, it's completely jammed up. It won't move at all. So uh, apparently the bend radius in the old cable is much bigger than the allowable bend radius in this uh, cable craft. 
And I think this is referred to as their LFXT. It's uh, kind of lumpy. Uh, so there's some cable winding inside. And this is really, really flat. And I cut this one apart. Yeah. Let's see what the cut is. Oh, there it is. So you can see the end here. It's, uh, it's just cables running along the, uh, or wire banding or whatever you want to call it, running along running along the uh, inside of the um, black sheath and then you can see the the actual cable that's inside of that so it's it's kind of smooth and I don't know what brand it is but anyway uh, this cable cost me 300 bucks so let's see uh, how well it works also I should point out that the uh, Literature on the Cablecraft website describing the efficiency of their cables really sucks. And I, I contacted them and said, hey, you know, this, this stuff sucks. You're not telling me anything. Do you have any more information? And they said, well, no. And we understand what you're saying, but there's some equations and that makes it more difficult. Ooh, so there's some scary equations so they can't tell me anything or something. Anyway, so they said something to the effect of, well, it just really depends on, on your, uh, your installation. So it will be specific to whatever you're doing. You know, it's like, well, give me a clue here, guys. Do I, do I really want to spend the money on, the, on your really high quality cable or can I buy a, a, a lesser quality cable? And uh, anyway, the BS they gave me didn't help at all. So I just said, okay, well, what the hell, I'll just buy one of their high quality cables and find out. Okay, now the uh, cable is installed, the new cable, not the old one. And I'm doing the weight test with just the baseline bucket. And here's 10 pounds of weight hanging on here. And 10 pounds gets this thing moving pretty easily. So, you know, 5 pounds doesn't quite move it. So maybe, you know, 7 or 8 pounds is moving it. And before it was uh, 25 pounds to move the baseline. So this is a factor of 3 easier, which is a lot. So now we'll try uh, adding some weight onto the bucket and see what happens. Now I added some weight to the bucket so there's 5 pounds of weight and a pair of vice grips. Just like before. And I've got 20 pounds of weight hanging off of here. And recall in the past that I had about 60 pounds piled on to make it move before. And now if I just kind of reach out here and touch it, you know, it goes. So we'll call that 20 pounds. And again, instead of 60, 20, so about a factor of 3 easier. And, and that's a lot. Okay, here we are at the helm again with a tip on cable adjustment. And this is for a single lever control. You notice there's the, you can see back there, that's the, uh, the throttle linkage and this is the reverse bucket linkage. And now I'm going into, I'm going to forward there. You can see as I move the throttle linkage, this actually moves very slightly while that's happening. Very slight motion there. And that means the reverse bucket is being raised very slightly while the throttle is being applied. So, consequently it's possible to make it so that you can't move the throttle if you've adjusted the brake bucket incorrectly. So let's go look for a minute. So here we are looking at the brake bucket, or reverse bucket, and this is a stop when you're in forward. So you want this the bucket to bump up against that, maybe. So you can see, you know, it's a, I can open it up just a little bit there and then push it back. So this is a when. So this is when my throttle is all the way forward. It's just barely bumping that. But originally I had it tightened up a little bit more so it was actually squishing into it a bit like this. And when it does that, then that makes it difficult to move the throttle. So you want this to be just barely bumping that or just barely clearing it. You don't want to be squishing into it otherwise the throttle is diff difficult. And that's for a single lever. If for a, you know, for a double lever then it's not an issue. So when I installed the new cable, I was able to well, route it where I wanted. So 
I moved down here and this is the final resting spot so it's attached lower down on this guy whereas before I'd, I had kind of attached it so it went up this way you know, above the exhaust pipe now it goes below it and since I posted the other thing on the internet the previous video on the internet somebody sent me a photo where uh, a second hole had been drilled into this arm off of the reverse bucket and that the purpose of the second hole was to keep this rod at its original height and when I was first thinking about this I thought well yeah that's what I should do but then um, you know, I, I should drill a higher hole and the reason being that well, on this uh, little break box thing the cable attaches right here. I was thinking, well, if, if the cable attaches here, it's higher than, than this rod, so I need to, and, and the rod attaches to the, uh, the bucket arm here on this guy, so because it's higher here, then I, I need to attach it higher on the, on the bucket arm. But that's not true. Um, if you think about it, well, if this box was taller, and the cable attached way up here, would that mean that you would drill a hole way up at the top of the bucket arm? No, you wouldn't. What you want, because the, uh, this box moves the same distance here or here, and so what you want to do is install the cable so it attaches where this guy used to attach. And so that's what I've done here. So that's the thing that makes sense. And then this cable now it's about three feet shorter than it used to be and it has substantially fewer bends in it in addition to having the um, new cable craft cable hopefully it will hold up pretty well uh, we'll find out in the future I suppose but now it's time to go for a test drive well here I am at the ramp for a test drive and uh, as you can see on the trailer, moving the lever is pretty darn easy. And I gotta back it out and see what happens. So I went out for a test drive and things were even more indescribably improved. Removing the brake box sure helped, but swapping out the cable made things so it's pretty much perfect. I can get reverse as fast as I want, whether I'm on plane or dragging ass in the water. It's all very repeatable and very easy. Uh, maybe 20 pounds force maximum to get into reverse when I'm dragging ass in the water, but probably less than that. I mean, a anybody could do it. It's really, really easy now. So some smart ass types might say, well, hey dummy, why didn't you just replace the cable and throw away the brake box why did you jump through all these sciencey steps and show everything that was happening why didn't you just cut to, cut to the chase well one of the reasons I did all this is because my experience is in the jet boat world there's a lot of just bullshit stuff you just can't believe people will say oh this is a lot better than that or oh this really sucks and it turns out that's just not true so you end up having to do a lot of testing yourself and so I did some testing here and I just wanted to show the results so you could see that this just wasn't a whole bunch of bullshit. You know, my final conclusion that it was a whole lot easier, well, you know, I, I wasn't measuring forces while I was out actually going on the test drive, but, you know, you could see from my weight, weights dangling off the, the lever that, yeah, sure, it was a lot easier. And, and that translates onto the river too. And as far as the uh, 300 bucks for the new cable, well, that's really nothing. You know, some people might say, oh God, 300 bucks, that's an awful lot. But if it means that you can operate your boat, 300 bucks is cheap. And I know I, I, I didn't check to see how much the original cable cost, but as far as I'm concerned, it had no value at all. Um, so even if it was free, I would not use it. The, uh, the new cable for 300 bucks, that was a steal. So now I'm uh, about done pontificating and now you know what I know. So happy boating.